follow up. You know, one thing I've always been interested in is, you know, a, really a child's social, social, emotional wellness, I, I think is really kind of inherent in music, you know, learning and playing an instrument has nothing but benefits. And yet, you know, music programs are typically the first things cut when a school is under financial stress. Um, you know, as someone who does what you do education and as a professional musician, you know, why should, why should we be concerned about that as a society oh, or as parents? Thank you, Jason. That is the epicenter of our conversation. Now, remember the pandemic also initiated conversation about our educational system. Mm -hmm. How do we evaluate? How do we evaluate the word diversity? Mm -hmm. How do we evaluate that in an orchestra setting where we're playing pretty much European, you know, not all the time, but most of the time it's composers who lived in Europe where there's very little diversity brought in to symphony orchestras mm -hmm. and to the school music program. So um, that I was hallelujah, let's have this conversation. So the most important thing for parents and teachers to understand and musicians understand it, but the way we talk about it is this. Music is the fastest conductor and connector with our emotions. Mm -hmm. Faster than movies and art. I mean, when you're watching a movie, it takes time to develop a story for you mm -hmm. to commit to understanding the storyline and all of a sudden you can weep to it. You are not weeping from the first film, from the first you know, frame of the film. It takes a while for the story to unfold. Music is instantaneous. We have scientific research on this. Right. So that fascinates me to know. And of course, that's why I get goosebumps. Right. Well, goosebumps, what is that? <laughs> Watching a movie, we're activating different parts of our brain. But when your eyes are closed and you're listening to Mahler's Second Symphony, which is my goosebump moment, mm -hmm. or listening to a Jimi Hendrix solo, that's my goosebump moment, uh, listening to Sgt. Peppers, listening to John Lennon's voice, listening to a great violin player in classic world or jazz. Um, how, how do I explain? I have no clue mm -hmm. why that's clicking. Why does someone that? So I, when I talk to my parents in the audience, I said, ladies and gentlemen, your kids are not going to be crying in baseball. They're not going to cry in football, but we allow them to explore their emotions in music. So right. the emotional contact and also Jason, part of my lecture series that I go around and talking uh, to schools and businesses, creative and emotional intelligent development mm -hmm. is critical. Harvard, Yale, all the Ivy League schools, if you're cookie cutter, especially now, if you play the cello, if you play a musical instrument, they, you will stick out mm -hmm. as much as the this, this star football player. Um, they're recognizing that everybody, including Albert Einstein, plays a yep. musical instrument. Why is that? Well, no one really seems to have that quickly at the, at, as an educational defense, mm -hmm. uh, but I got it. I got it, man. I know how to explain it to administrators and parents when I go out and, and meet principals who I tell the principal, you have an orchestra program. Uh, really? <laughs> I didn't even know. We, you know, oh, I've been to the football. I've never been to a concert. Right. Oh, yep. My goodness. Are you kidding me? The yep. kid who's in the back of the second violin section or playing the clarinet, that kid very much could be the next Elon Musk. The right. Next, um, you know, scientist. Right. There's always an athlete of the week. Why isn't there a musician of the week or an Thank artist you. of the week? You know? Thank, oh, that's a good one, Jason. I'm going to bring that up as a part of the school cheerleading. Here's the, here are the statistics. 24%, only 24% of high school students participate in the arts programs. Really? Terrible. Wow. I would have thought it's higher. I would have. Wow. And teaching music uh, right before the pandemic, they did a, a survey. 23, 24% of high school students participate in the music program. Of that 24%, this is where it gets really depressing. 13% choir, 11% band, 2% orchestra. 2% orchestra, wow. And I saw that, yes. And in fact, I do know that of all the 10,000 plus school districts in this country, there's only 20% of them have orchestra programs. They have band programs, marching band, they have choir, yep. no orchestra programs. So we are even in a more minority shrinkage 
moment. And now with the diversity um, equation and conversation with our educational programs, do you really think they're going to hold on to a program that's not embracing the next 10 to 20 years of educating a child, of allowing diversity and the ch differences in culture be a part of the conversation? Mm -hmm. Music. Come on, you and I know exactly that music is the perfect Indian music. After every culture, just like it has its food and its culinary experience, has its music. Right. And if we don't explore other cultures' music, then we don't understand the culture as much. And that's the new conversation. So my teachers, you must, must open the floodgates because, by the way, you want that to be there too. Right. You are a diverse person. You interact the world with it. But once you get your instrument, do you stop that? You shut that off? Are you kidding me? That's where in our music classes where we can truly celebrate. When you hear me Indian music, right, Jason? Mm -hmm. You're transported directly to that beautiful culture. When you hear African music, when you hear hip hop, when you hear rock and roll, when you hear classical music from a specific era, whether it's the romantic era or the classical era, you are instantaneously brought into an environment right. that is magnificent. You may not, might not be your cup of tea, and maybe I might not listen to two hours of that, but as an educational classroom experience, Jason, we must, this is our job, because when they go out in the real world, how awesome is it that they, oh, let's go to that Indian restaurant, and I'm listening, oh, I heard this music in class. Right, and then your 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 respect and your um, ability to really embrace other people who are different, bingo, we win. Right now, now here's a interesting thing. As you were talking, though, you know, I'm sure a lot of teachers, as with any profession, you know, I'm I'm mostly a writer, so I know the same thing with writers. How you know teachers have a way they do things. They were taught their way. They a lot of them have been doing it for multiple years. So how do you kind of break through their entrenched ways? And how, how do you revolutionize them with your ideas? Yeah, and that's really, that's been a, a, the biggest uh, journey for me. I don't use the word challenge. I don't use the word difficulty. It's a journey that we're taking. And it, it does amaze me in the music world. I can understand in math. And by the way, a math teacher every couple of years has to relearn how to teach it, right? Sci right? Science, English, because right. there's a new way. Yeah. Got, and, and, and by the way, you cannot say, well, I'm going to teach the math that we taught 50 years ago. Right. Uh, you're fired. So why is it that with the arts that we don't have the same uh, clarification? Right. We don't. Um, and that's insane. Uh, because we must redefine. And I do a lot of teacher training. I do a lot of in-school um, uh, residencies where we work with teachers. Mm -hmm. And I do find the pushback uh, of uh, learning something new. Mark, do we imp I don't know. I, you know, the, if the math teacher was saying, I'm not interested in, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> You're out of there, man. <laughs> right. So I think that the oversight of the art supervisors and administrators overseeing, and I've worked with some wonderfuls who really get that that they do the teacher training, you must learn this because mm -hmm. your orchestra class uh, 20 years ago was 400 kids and now your class is 20 kids. Right. Guess what? We're gonna re just remove the program. Right. Because of its antiquated system. So when I work with teachers, I really talk about that this is a benefit not only to the future of your students, but it's a benefit to you as a creative thinker. Are you a creative thinker? You know, are you, uh, Mr. or Mrs., a, a creative thinker in your classroom, or are you regurgitating what we've been teaching, not just for a, a, a couple of years, we're regurgitating for hundreds of years. Right. This is the way it's done. This is it. Yep. That's the box. You have to be in this box, Mark, and, I, and I, we spoke earlier. No box for me, man, <laughs> is my... Because the greatest things in the world of humanity are people who break the box. Absolutely. Hands down. Hands down. And that exists as much in art, as much as automobile industry, technology. It all works in the same way. When, when Sergeant Peppers came out with the Beatles, 
it was a landmark watershed moment mm -hmm. that brought us into the 70s with Led Zeppelin. And yes, we've got to finally to Britney Fox, your favorite band. <laughs> hey, I've seen them live like four times. So <laughs> right. I remember you told me that even they were as they were had the poofy hair up and they had yep. the hairspray. That's an important part of being a musician, hairspray. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, in art, it's equally important. We revere it, but it takes a little bit longer. Now you're looking at the Metropolitan Opera. You're looking at leadership of the New York Philharmonic with symphony orchestras and museums. And I've, I've spent time with people who claim to me that it's better that we put the symphony orchestras into a museum to protect them. Hmm. And I don't, I, you know, I understand that. I right. get that. But a kid who's into hip hop and heavy metal, let's say, also can, should be exposed to Beethoven and Mozart and Stravinsky, and you can absolutely show the connection between those music styles really easily. And if you don't know how to do that, then you're failing as a teacher. Right. So we're dealing with a very, very interesting moment, uh, Jason, that I, I'm hoping that we rise up. And